Hallelujah, my friend. We welcome you to the show today. Let's take a minute and uh, uh, let's pray. Hallelujah, Father. We always love you and welcome you. We thank you for allowing us to do part two of this show, winning the battle of mind. As people are watching today, we proclaim that there shall be joy, that there shall be freedom, that there shall be healing, because you have come to set the captive free. My friend, open up your heart. Open up your listening ear. Let God touch you and bless you on this show today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I want to give a special thanks uh, to everyone out there who is supporting our ministry and to many people who work hard in this ministry to make this show happen. Well, today we have you, Jesse, coming back. Do you mind taking a minute to just say hi, tell people who you are. There are people who did not watch the show yesterday and uh, just introduce yourself. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, my name is Jesse. I'm a pastor at Blazing Holy Fire Thailand. The Blazing Holy Fire Church has ministries all over the world, in Africa, in Europe, in Asia. So we are expanding our ministries yes. very rapidly because God wants this world to be set ablaze for Him. So um, I'm one of the people that are working with the team in the, ex in the ministry expansion. Yes. yes, hallelujah, thank you. Now let me tell you, uh, the, the speciality in our ministry, number one, is to spread the fire. You need to receive the baptism of the fire because it's the fire that purifies you. The Bible says, be you holy as I am holy. How can you be holy without that fire? We are here for you. And the other thing that the Lord has us do in this ministry, as we have seen it for many years, mm -hmm is deliverance and many, many people. Now, just say you've been delivered through uh, this ministry. Uh, do you mind telling people uh, in general how you feel? Uh, it's been four years ever since we met. Uh, we met. Uh, what is the difference? What are the things that you could not do before that you do now? What are the gifts that you have received? through this fire ministry. Amen. So um, how I discovered this ministry is it's very miraculous because I had a dream. Yes. In my dream, I was praying and there was fire all over and that place I was praying was like a university. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was as if the Lord was trying to signal to me that I'll be brought into this university of the fire ministry as Amen. to be trained. And in my dream, I was casting out demons, and I was um, ministering, I was uh, preaching the gospel, over, it was sharing the truth. But um, during that season was in my dark seasons of backsliding and, and not knowing um, the real Jesus. Yes. So um, coming to the fire ministry was very, very life-changing. I grew up as a Christian without a strong um, you know, church background that right. would for someone to mentor me, for someone to really tell me about how to follow Jesus. So coming to this ministry is like encountering the real Jesus and being introduced to how to really follow Him. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I was into the week. I was my I was very very spiritually weak, and then through this ministry, the Lord trained me how to pray, how to pray strong, how to defeat the demons how to overcome darkness, how to overcome battles in my mind. And he also equipped me with spiritual gifts. Um, as I was in Thailand, um, there was a lot of spiritual warfare. So he would equip me with spiritual weapons to fight the demons. Mm -hmm. He would equip me with um, the gift, uh, like um, holy dance, 
which is the Holy Spirit dancing, and um, give the prophecy, interpretation of tongues, and uh, so many other spiritual gifts that came through when I entered the fire industry. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing it out with us. Let me say, um, our ministry, uh, it's really run by Jesus. We do not do much advertisement. We are not even in a church building. So how can people find us? You know, the Lord has told me, this is my ministry. You do not worry about anything. And he puts us in a house, a church. We don't have a sign. We don't advertise. Uh, except like when we have a really revival. But ever since the time we met you, when the Lord is the one who send people. They usually meet us on the line. Uh, people are searching. And we have been doing hundreds of deliverance ever since 2009. When we finish one deliverance, the Lord send another one. And there are times the Lord send three people all at once. And so what the Lord has us do is train people like you. And uh, we do deliverance for people on the line. We take our time to mentor. Now, Jesse happens to be one of the people that we train. And now you've been mentoring other people, yes, right? Yes. Okay, do you mind sharing um, about... Uh, you know, how God has used you to mentor other people. Um, you, you know, there are people you met who were just barely born again Christians. What is the process that you take them through that today we have leaders from all over the world who are free, who are doing the same thing like Jess is doing? So um, it's really amazing, like pastors mentioned, that um, none of us actually came here because of the big advertisement online or anything, right. because this is a very hidden place. I mean, it is a Lord who would bring people here. So, and the people that he actually brought to us are actually handpicked. It's as if they are handpicked by the Lord yes. because of the um, the willingness that they have, the hunger that they have, and the willingness to go for whatever to length as long as the Lord requires them to. So um, what the Lord is looking for uh, to start with is people who are really willing and would go to very extreme, extreme end, right. no matter what, what it costs. So um, the Lord would bring me people online as well. Um, and then we would talk. And then when, when we talk, I just find out about them, just find out where what kind of background they're from and you know the, the condition of the heart, whether or not they are ready to receive whatever God wants them to receive. So um, so I would we, we would start off and then I'll give them a little bit of a homework. And most people when they come a lot of people when they come here to us, um, they have not been baptized by the Holy Spirit. So in other words, they don't speak in the heavenly language. They are just baby Christians. And there are times we get people who are not even born again yet. Yes. But we mentor them. So you take them through yes. the process of receiving yes. the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Even online. Even yes. online. Did you hear that? And then you take them through the process of receiving the baptism of fire as yes. well, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. And then there'll be process of um, deliverance and um, being molded because a lot of people, when they come here, just like me in the past, we didn't grow up in a strong church background. I mean, what I mean is that church that really knows how to fight demons. So church knows how to overcome the darkness. Church that really cares about the condition of a heart be more than the activities that we do as a Christian. So when I encounter people, most of them are not at that stage where they are spiritually mature. So we would give them um, teachings and homeworks and for them to exercise. And then they'll keep in touch with other mentors, they'll keep in touch with me, and then we'll, we'll pray like once a month or once a week. And then 
I would be amazed at how the Lord began to work in their lives. Like they would, they would text me and say, Jesse, last night, um, the Lord gave me dreams and visions. And, you know, the Lord came to me and I saw him or I would begin to receive spiritual gifts. I begin to see things in the spirit without, you know, us, it, it, I wasn't even like the one who caused it to happen, but it was because the Lord is in this ministry. Yes. So when people are in this ministry, they begin to encounter the Jesus, that, that, that we, the real Jesus, and they begin to experience heaven. They begin to experience um, the real spiritual experiences that are recorded in the Bible. This is amazing. Today we have many pastors who are so desperate to fill the church with 70,000 people. But you know what? Let God's dream be your dream. You know, the Lord spoke to me. This is especially for you pastors. The Lord spoke to me and he said, I want the people who are Faithful, and as you know, it's very hard to find so many who are faithful. So he spoke to me. He says, "No matter how few people I bring to your ministry, make sure that you take good care of them, as if it was your own sheep, as if it was your own son." And the Lord spoke to me, "Do not despise the small beginnings." Because I will use the few to conquer the whole world. Do you remember the 12 disciples? Mm -hmm. These are the people, 12. Mm -hmm. They turn the whole world upside down. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesse, I remember the first time you mentored a young man mm -hmm. uh, from the Philippines. And now he's a pastor also. God used you and God really moved in a, a mighty way. We give him all the glory. Mm -hmm. Can you tell what started happening to this young man? Can you tell people how the family member who were not believers, actually who were persecuting him, they all came to Jesus. Can you tell people how the Lord began to appear face to face to the little children? Can you share things like that? So there is a young man in the Philippines that um, contacted me, I think like three years ago or so. And he was um, he was very hungry. He's like, um, sister, I, I we found you online and I will really want to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Do I need to fly to a certain place to be baptized? And then I'm like, no, you know, I believe that God is everywhere. Yes. And we can always come to him and he will honor our call to just be baptized with his Holy Spirit and, and he will come right where you are. So I began to talk to him and, and you know, I scheduled a call with him. So I called him, he was um, high on the mountain in the Philippines and I told him, okay, find a place where you can pray loudly. So I, I call him and I say, okay, I'm going to pray with you for you to receive the Holy Spirit and that we pray together and he, immediately he received the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and then he again saw like a vision of flash of light coming it was like Jesus appearing and soon enough um, we, we kept on you know calling each other every single weekend every mm -hmm. I think every Sunday or, or Saturday we call each other every week and I'll, I'll pray with him and just right. train him to pray and then his little um, younger brother and sister began to follow him to the mountain place where he prayed right. and he is like oh Jesse um, there are two of, of them here uh, what, what can we do so I say okay um, we're gonna pray and then um, God will also baptize them in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So yes, we pray together and the Lord indeed was present there and he baptized them with the power of the Holy Spirit and the girl began to saw the vision of Jesus mm -hmm. and um, it, the following day, they, they went to, uh, the following time, they went to baptize you know, the two little kids in the, in the river in the Philippines right. because they were not baptized yet. So in during the baptism um, of the little boy, the little girl began to hear the sound of trumpet mm. very loudly, 
while the baptism was going on, the trumpet of God. Hallelujah. And soon enough, um, more kids began to flock together, and they were praying in tongues. They began to see um, things in the spirit, the spiritual eyes were open. They could see heaven, they could see Jesus, they could receive messages from him. Mm -hmm. So it was just amazing. Wow, my friend, that's not just a tale. It's a true story. A true revival broke out in the Philippines, in the middle of nowhere, in a place where the only religion they have is Catholicism. These little kids, they all converted, they began to speak in the tongues. My friend, I was there in uh, 2017, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, towards the end of 2017, uh, a little bit of uh, a year ago, I was there. And it's real. I got to spend uh, over a week in the Philippines. I saw uh, these children. And now it has grown up to be uh, a, a full-time ministry. And God is moving. It's amazing to watch all these little kids casting out demons, speaking in tongues, seeing Jesus. In fact, one of them, uh, when they, 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 she went to school, uh, someone fainted and uh, she was able to see the spirits that were operating. So these little kids uh, began to really shine for Jesus. Now, I want to say this to all of you who are watching. Things like this, they don't happen without you pastors, without you leader paying a price. I have watched just how she mentors those people. First of all, there is faithfulness, dedication unto the Lord. I have watched Jesse calling uh, this young man, his name is Glenn, and in the beginning they would talk to each other over the phone, praying, even in a very hard conditions because uh, the Wi-Fi there, the connection is not really, the internet connection is not good. I watch Jesse sticking to the program they have every week they meet and they pray. And every week God will remove and uh, even giving them a homework during the week. And so it's toward this ministry, uh, they pray every night. How we know God move when they do things like that? It's been like over two years, mm -hmm. and this ministry is still running. Mm -hmm. Praise God, praise God. Is there something that you want to say to our viewers before uh, we talk about deliverance? Um, just to add on to leaders and pastors, um, before I entered the ministry, one day the Lord just spoke to me loudly and clearly that um, Jesse, you will be um, responsible for whoever is under you. It means that he will ask for account of them from me on the last day. So in this ministry of leader, we are small, but each of us and every one of us takes these small things very faithfully and very seriously. Mm -hmm. So just like what pastor said, no matter how small you are, God will look at your faithfulness. He will look at your loyalty to him. He will look at how you treat little things each and every single day. Yes. Yes, thank you. Now, my friend, if you have your Bible with me, let's go to the book of Galatians uh, chapter five. And uh, we will just look at these uh, uh, three verses. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, Outbursts of anger, dispute, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like this, mm -hmm. of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Did you hear that? 
If you practice these things, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Yet, we see many Christians today who are struggling with these things. This is where deliverance comes in. When you become a believer, it doesn't mean that overnight you overcome jealousy. It doesn't mean that overnight you overcome drunkenness. So when the devil sees you being saved many times, he will work so hard that you are not free in some areas that I just read for you. Now, just when I met you, you were still struggling with these issues, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, Jesse, uh, we meet here after she has become a Christian quite for a while, but she's struggling with the battle of mind. Now, what is the battle of mind? Do you mind explaining to me, to the viewer, what is the battle of mind? Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know about other people, you know, I, I know that there are people who grew up in the background where things are very, very um, innocent, you know, in, in that country. But for me, um, I grew up in front of TV, like every single day in my yes. childhood, I spent six hours or so in front of TV because my parents are busy and they think, oh, the best way to keep her quiet and calm is to put her in front of a TV. So I'll be watching like Cartoon Network. I'll be watching cartoons every like from from dawn to dusk. Mm -hmm. That is how I was spent. So my your life. mind would be filled with all the junk coming from the TV. Yeah. So and when you were watching, when I was watching cartoon, it's to train my mind to like always change the chapter. It's like how the cartoon always change the scene. So in my mind, the way I would look at things. I would see from so many angles and I would, it's like there was a big spider web in my mind. So even though uh, the matter, the, the real essence of the thing is just a little thing in the center of a spider web, but it just spreads all over. So if I encounter one single problem, I can start from that problem. I can think about it for three of hours for one whole day and I can think about the whole entire thing in the universe. Mm -hmm. So um, I would struggle with spirit of depression, spirit of fear, spirit of worry, spirit of lust, spirit of everything. Um, and it can start with one tiny little thing. For example, if I don't wake up at the right time to pray in the morning, right. I will say, oh my goodness, I'm going to have a bad day. And from having a bad day, it means that I go to work, I'm going to struggle at work. So you're thinking it that way. Yeah, and I'm going to struggle at work. And then if people who are not spiritually clean come up, come to me, then their spirit will transfer to me because I'm weak because I didn't get up at the right time in the morning. And so I'm going to have a really bad day. And when I get, go back home, I'm going to be very tired. And when I got tired, I'm going to have nightmares. And after nightmares, I'm going to wake up again in the morning with bad dreams and, and having a bad day. So it can be start with little thing like tiny little speck like that. And it so it's a, it's a seed, it's more a seed yeah. that can grow. Yeah. Like a baby tree. So like every thought can be like a seed, like a tree can grow out of okay. it. Okay, there is a battle of mind when you do not have the mind of Christ. My friend, if you are struggling with this, if there are these, the list of the things I read in Galatians chapter 5, 19, all the way to 21, if you are struggling with those things, it's because there is a battle for mind. You, do, you are not fully living, having, owning the mind of Christ. God wants you to have the mind of Christ. Absolutely, it's possible for you to live a life free of fear, free of lust, Free of impure thoughts. Do not be a Christian who is having impure thoughts and you think that's not that's normal. Because as a man thinker, so is he in his heart. How do we get the man of Christ? You have a Bible? You need to get one. 
And every day you need to embarrass yourself in the Bible. But I'm not just talking about reading. I'm talking about you getting into this book and having the words of this book just be implanted in your heart. But for many people, it's even a struggle to read the Bible. You know, I have a friend of mine, even it used to be your case. You read the Bible after maybe an hour, you ask yourself, what did I read? I wonder, you don't even remember if you, what you read about the Bible, if you got even anything from that. So when the battle of mind keeps going on, you read the Bible, you're still struggling with a porno, with a lust, that's where deliverance comes in. It's very hard for someone who is bound to set themselves free. Would you think so? Yeah. Okay, so that's where deliverance comes in. That's why in Look, actually John 11, the, the chapter we read yesterday, after Lazarus was uh, raised from the dead by Jesus, he came abound, and the Lord says, unbind him, take those shackles away, break every chain. Because Jesus did not just die for you to just say the, the, the prayer to receive Jesus, but you live your life like somebody who is not really free. It was for freedom. Mm -hmm. So this is possible. What was your journey of being free? So um, the first thing is to know you, the truth. Yes. And the thing about... Um, this ministry is that um, we get a chance to talk to pastors and pastors been very faithful in, 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 in doing the Lord's work. So um, I'm like, I would I got, I have to tell the truth because I've been in, into many ministries and when they see something in you, they rarely come to you and confront you for that. Mm -hmm. So what she did was that she just come with a spanking spoon and said, Jesse, that's your problem. Um, you have this problem, you have this selfishness, you have this, and when, when, I got ex when things get exposed, that is when um, you can, it's a first step to freedom. Mm -hmm. So a lot of time when, when we, are, we don't know ourselves or we just don't know what our problem is, for example, I might have grown up seeing things happening that way, so I think that's the way of life. You know, that's the way people complain, people think about themselves. I thought that's the that's normal thing. Mm -hmm. But when someone actually point out, and when you, when you read the Word of God, and the Word of God confronts you, you need to really pay attention. Like, oh, it's not, it's not like, okay, the Word of God says this, but let me just pass it. So when, when you are confronted with the truth, and then you know that you fall short of that standard of what the truth is, then you need to wake up and say, hey, wait a minute, I have a problem here. Because actually, the, the thing that actually possess people are the small little thing that seem like it just don't matter. Like um, selfishness, people think, well, everyone is selfish, everyone worry, everyone have concerns, everyone um, think and pure thought. They think everyone does it, so it's okay for me to have that problem. But when they are confronted with the truth, with the word of God, and the word of God says, no, that's not okay. It's time for us to wake up and say, wait a minute, let me fight this off myself. Let me just get rid of this of my life. And that is the first step to freedom. That is, and also it's your desire to always want to be pure before God. Amen. Thank you for yes. sharing that. Uh, there is a scripture that I was reading today and I want to share this with you. Because many people say, well, they need to read scripture. But there are people who read the scriptures and they don't understand. That's where deliverance comes in to hear people see. You may read this, but if you're bound, if you're blind, you're not going to be able to understand the scripture. In John chapter 5, verse 39, uh, Jesus is speaking and he says, You search the scripture because you think that in them you have eternal life. It is this that testify about me. 
and you are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. Jesus is speaking to the religious leader uh, of that time. And he is saying, you search the scriptures. If the Lord is saying this, it's true 100%. He watches the Pharisees and the scribes. They're reading the Bible. Oh, we want to see the Messiah. We are waiting for the Messiah. That's not him. And so they were searching the scriptures. But because they were reading the scripture with the veil over their face, they cannot see, they cannot understand. That's what the enemy does. When you see people reading and they're not able to apply, hey, there is a problem. And that's where you personally need to come in and break those chains. Because once you break those chains, people will be able to see. People read the Bible. You assign them the Bible every day. But they don't get anything out of it because... They are reading, it's not, they don't get anything. So you as a pastor, you need to come in and help them break the word of God down for them. But not only that, someone who needs uh, to be delivered from those chances that binds them, mm -hmm. they need to be taken to the room of deliverance where we have taken a Jesse. So Jesse, please give me a minute. I want to explain to the people how we do deliverance here. My friend, when we do deliverance here, we throw away our watches. <laughs> the Lord has spoken to me that one person is very, very important to him. There is a scripture in the Bible that talks about that, right? Mm -hmm. He leaves the 99 and he goes after the one that is lost. And instead of having a 70,000 church member where many people are bound, for me, I want to do deliverance on everyone who is bound. And when we do that, we take our time. We can't say, well, this is taking two hours and we are not finished yet, so therefore we're going to give up. Deliverance can take hours, days, and months. But I tell you, every single day, you see chains broken and you see transformed lives. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, Jesse, even when you were not totally free, mm -hmm. God still used you. Yeah. Can you tell people about the gift? I know there are many people who have been blessed by your ministry. May I have received many emails, people saying, oh, oh, my life is changed. Even while you are still going through the battle of mind, uh, you still submitted to God and you did minister to the people, yes. right? Yes. So I always say right now that Miracle signs and wonders don't validate me as a minister of God. It doesn't say yes. how good you are. It says God is good and God I'm is good. Yeah. You know, God didn't use me because I am good and I'm pure and I'm clean. But, you know, if we focus on the outer appearance of our ministry too much, we can actually miss a sense of the relationship with God as well. But um, the Lord has been, was using me mightily, even though I was having all the demonic oppressions um, that I was going through the Lord actually used me to deliver people out of demons from demons like from legion and legion I would call them on the phone and the Lord would begin to reveal certain strongholds in their life through a vision to me and I would say okay in your house there is this object placed over here there is this what is it and they begin to confess and then I would say okay when you were little you did this and you know the Lord would would give me a vision of, of what's happening in, in their house, in their lives, and how and whatever stronghold is in their life. And then we would confess our sins together and then cast demons out. And then the Lord would use me to preach, to do revivals, um, to, to heal people, and to do so many things. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is so good. Now, we will not leave you today without telling you at least a few things on how you do deliver. And then we are going to continue tomorrow. 
we're gonna really take you on this journey until everyone is free. The way you do deliverance on people is to lead them into repentance. Because where there is an open door with women, where there is a sin, the enemy has the legal ground to come and keep you captive in that area. So the whole thing about deliverance is really helping the people to repent. But you might say, well, why don't you let them repent on their own? Because the enemy is evil and is so wicked. And many times, he makes people forget what they did wrong. Have you ever seen people who really trash you? And all of a sudden, they say, oh, now I feel good. After they talk, talk negative and complain against you. And after that, they say, oh, I feel good. They did something wrong, but they move on. They never come back to you and they say, you know what? I am sorry about what I said that day. Mm -hmm. It's because the enemy, that blind, they can't see what wrong they did. So a minister in deliverance, you come in because the moment you begin to pray, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit will reveal, okay, this is where there is an open door. This is person or that person. This is what they did. And you guide them through repentance. And I tell you, this is a serious because there are times where you can even dare someone to say, I forgive my father. I forgive my mother who abused me because it hurts so much. The enemy want the mouth closed so that they don't confess. Because when we confess our sins, then the enemy has no longer a legal right to oppress us. So to do the difference is to hear people to repent. And once they repent, what is the process that we do? We cast them out. We cast them out. You do not leave the demons inside we bind them and we cast them out mm -hmm. listen tomorrow we will talk more about this uh before i begin to pray for people because the lord is showing me right now there are people who are ready for deliverance there are people demons are living as we talk uh jesse is there an, an advice or is there something that you have on your heart to tell people before we close um desire to be holy at all cost that is the first and the most important step is your willingness to be set free so um, always ask the lord to break your heart and and just really desire to be holy forget about the pleasures and the things of this life the thing you have to be crucified to this world and just want to to really be set free and be set apart to do god's work and that is very important. Amen, my friend. You hear all of that? I would say this. In order for the deliverance to take place, you have to be willing. You have to be willing. You've got to come to the place where you are like, I don't want this anymore. I am done with this sin. I am tired of watching the porn. I am tired of having the spirit of lust following me. I am tired of being always worried. So you have to come to that place. And that's why I am praying for you. Let's pray. Oh, right now, Lord, we pray that you bring the people to the end of themselves. Well, Lord, there's no one else to catch them by you. desire to be fully possessed by you, to be fully owned by you because you paid a heavy price. Hallelujah. The Lord is telling me right now, expose yourself to him. Do not have hidden sins. Do not have secretive sins. As you stand in front of this camera, just Oh, mighty God, it's so...
the mighty sword in their hands. Just if the Lord show you something, the place is very free to, to move and tell the people. So I see uh, the angel bringing the sword and cutting the chains that bind you. And the Lord is speaking to you. Walk away. Walk away from those sins that once bound you. Walk away from the negative satanic tongue. Oh, walk away. God's people, walk away from a fornication. Walk away from an ungodly, an ungodly thought. Walk away. You have the power to do that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continue to pray and continue to seek God as He brings freedom, freedom to your house as He brings freedom in the lives of your children. And the Lord is speaking to you, mothers and fathers. Teach them to play with each other. Let them play with you, with each other. Do not let TV yes. become a parent because TV is not a good parent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Jesus 